Um, so if this is being recorded, it will then be shared on the Woodcraft Folk website. Um, so if at any point you do uh, unmute yourself and say things, your voice will be being recorded. Um, but you can just type comments if you don't want to have your voice uh, recorded as part of the webinar. And that can also be uh, a way of participating. So uh, my name's Pippa. I am the communications manager and project coordinator for uh, a new groups project. And I work out of uh, folk office in London. And I am going to be facilitating this webinar tonight on community events. So community events, what we mean is attending an already organized event with uh, to offer us a chance to promote woodcraft folk and this contributes to um, our plans to kind of widen and increase participation so it can help us to advertise groups to new members and new volunteers and also give uh, a wider range of young people a chance to participate in woodcraft activities um, as a one-off at those various um, events. So tonight's webinar, we're going to cover a little bit on um, what sort of events. So looking at different kinds of community events. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about setting up a stall and the processes involved in having a stall or an activity um, at a community event. And we're also going to talk about some suggested activities that we may have found worked well at events we've done in the past. And then we'll finish up with a few top tips and a chance for some more um, open floor discussion uh, and answering any questions um, that you might have. So what sort of community events? Um, does anyone want to um, share with us any kinds of community events they've done in the past? Um, either drop them into the chat or feel free to um, unmute yourself uh, and kind of share some of those. What kind of uh, places have you been? Could be places that you've been just as a, a visitor or a participant. Doesn't, doesn't have to be something you've done with Woodcraft Folk. Well, with Woodcraft Folk, I've done a few different community events. Mm -hmm. um, through my job, we work with other community groups. So I've done like community open days, sort of showcasing the entire project with the other community groups. And um, the Falkirk Woodcraft Group have a kind of community garden, which is okay. run by another local charity. So we've been to like a, an event called Eat the Streets, which is celebrating all the community gardens and all the different groups who look after them. Cool. That sounds like yeah, a really good example. Um, so they, they might be kind of small. They might be just um, working, like you said, in kind of partnership with another one or two other community organizations and showcasing or it might be something uh, really large um, so I know in the eastern region they go to places like Latitude Festival um, so we're talking about wide variety of scales here um, and as you'll see from this from the slide there's lots of, of variation to what a community event might involve so it might be indoors or outdoors um, it might be uh, last for just a couple of hours like a small kind of fate or it might last for a few days like a multi-day festival um, in terms of attending them it might be the kind of event where they give you a setup so you've got tables and chairs the area you can use and the resources are uh, kind of designated for you or you might need to take your own gazebo your own uh, tent or um, your own uh, resources entirely for the activity you want to run um, Various different community events. Um, some of them might expect you to pay to take part, whereas others might uh, kind of waive a fee on base of charity or be free to take part in just to have kind of as many kind of community groups there as possible. 
others actually will might give you a donation in offer uh, in return for offering um, free activities. So it's always uh, worth asking um, the organisers and pointing out that we are a charity. Uh, if you want to take part in community events, even if they just advertise a a price for a stall, um, quite often there's a, a lower price, if not free, um, for a, for a community group or charity to take part in those. Um, and then also really important to think about in in terms of which community events you might want to go to and um, where do people travel from to get to that event. Um, it might be a really large event, so um, those kind of larger festivals, which might bring together districts across a whole uh, region or the country um, so that um, you can kind of talk about groups all over the, the, the kind of remit. Um, pool the area that people are coming from or it might be a very specific uh, community event that's within walking distance of your group night venue um, and targeting very much that local community um, who are maybe more likely to then come um, and join the group. Um, <clears throat> within uh, the new groups project uh, in the eastern region we've done a whole variety of those so we've been to uh, multi-day music festivals where we've put on kind of the children's activity corner and been able to talk to families from um, all over the region of different groups that might be close to them but we've also done the kind of um, community center fate or school like christmas fair or summer fair um, where you are particularly talking to those um, from a very local area um, trying to engage them uh, in, in attending the group and we'll get on to a little bit about kind of what different activities and what different information you might need depending on the scale um, but each of them has has their uses um, and different approaches to kind of contribute to to kind of get increasing engagement with Woodcraft folk. So as you've chosen kind of what event you want to attend there's uh, some important things to think about before and during um, that kind of process. So before, um, you need to think about risk assessments. Um, and there's a link in the slides there um, to where on the website you can find a template uh, risk assessment. And this will be risk assessing um, some of the kind of common risks of a stool. So if you're outside with a gazebo table and chairs, thinking about weather conditions um, and wind and those kind of hazards but then risk assessing what activity you specifically want to do um, as well. A lot of community events will ask you about public liability insurance and any event you're doing as part of the Woodcraft folk you're covered by our public liability insurance and you can find the certificate for that again on the link on the slide uh, on the website um, so you can just share that link to the um, the certificate with the event organizers um, and that will yeah show them that you're you're covered in terms of um, any uh, insurance needs they might have of you um, and another thing to think about beforehand is asking the event organizer if you can have a, a collection tin for donations on the stall so you can use these outreach activities as an opportunity to also raise some funds for your group or district um, but you need to ask permission uh, in advance um, from the event organisers and the landowners if they are different people. Um, it might be the, the venue itself and then the kind of committee or group organising the event um, just to check that everyone is happy um, before collecting uh, donations in a public space. Um, and then at the event itself, um, a few things to think about. Make it clear who you are. So you want to use this opportunity um, to kind of spread the message and uh, people's, raise people's awareness of Woodcraft folk. How will they know that your stall um, belongs to this organisation? So that might be having some posters very visible. It might be having a banner, if possible, um, to make sure that the, the name, um, the logo, or it might be a locally produced uh, banner that children and young people um, have made that helps to also showcase some of our uh, aims and principles um, in the kind of visu visible identity um, on your stall. Make sure you've got something for people to be able to take the information away with them. So take along um, some leaflets that give people um, 
relevant information for where they could um, find out more, who they should contact and what kind of groups are available um, locally to them. And really encourage people to come over to the store. You want to make it as inviting as possible. Um, so using signage, um, particularly to stress that um, you're providing kind of free activities that people can uh, drop in and um, participate in and find out more. Um, and use those kind of calls to action um, to get people um, to come over and choose to, to interact with you at the uh, event. So as I mentioned previously, having a free activity is a really good way to uh, get people to get involved. Thinking about activities in particular that um, children and young people um, can uh, have a go at. Um, and for younger children, that, that keeps them occupied and a chance for you to have a, a conversation with more information for their parents. Um, and then, yeah, for older children uh, and young people that you can engage through that activity in a discussion about what Woodcraft Folk is and how they can get um, involved. You want to tailor the activity to the age groups um, that you want to kind of recruit children to groups for um, and also the age group that the, the event targets. Um, it might be, say, uh, a primary school um, summer fate, and you know that the activities that you put on there are going to kind of have to be appropriate to uh, the primary school age group. That's going to be the, the main uh, attendees. <coughs> Sorry. You want to choose a, an activity that would give uh, young people uh, a kind of a taste of possible activities they might do um, at a group night or on a camp uh, if they got uh, more involved and um, wanted to to join uh, a local woodcraft folk group and also maybe showcase, showcasing some of our aims and principles and what makes woodcraft folk um, unique and special and um, what they would, could very much uh, engage more with um, through the organisation. You want to try and make it as eye-catching as possible. Um, you're probably on a stool when there's lots of other stalls around you. You want to have something that um, makes people want to come over um, and um, easy for them to kind of participate in and see what, what's available to them on that stall. And then I've got a few suggestions here of what's worked well in our uh, new groups project so far. So we found... Uh, a wide variety of different events. You can use um, making uh, paper chains or making bunting about um, peace, friendship, or maybe uh, another topic from the aims and principles. Um, it's an activity that can be quite open-ended. So somebody could really quickly make a contribution or they might spend quite a lot of time um, over um, crafting um, their their response to that. It also can be uh, quite an open-ended collaborative and cooperative activity. So you can start with just a few paper chains and see how much it can grow over time. There's no kind of limit to how many people can get involved in that. We've also found particularly for the uh, um, outdoor community events um, where you might have quite a large uh, kind of footfall or audience passing, making some big garden games from recycled materials. So we've had um, a bowling alley, um, a giant kind of connect four, a large snakes and ladders board and large dice um, made out of recycled cardboard and other junk materials, which gives us a chance to talk about um, environmental issues, but also gives something uh, really recognisable, um, particularly for children and young people to come over and have a go at. Um, and they see, yeah, they understand how to participate in them um, and the, the kind of fun benefits of that activity. Uh, as I said before, uh, some kind of craft activity that is easy to explain and gives you a chance to then have a conversation um, with the young people and with their parents or carers who might have come with them. And then also cooperative um, activities like uh, creating group murals and marble runs um, has been a really good way to, to um, demonstrate and have those conversations around the importance of cooperative values um, in woodcraft folk groups. 
So thinking about those and maybe um, some of the other kind of community events you've attended or you may have um, kind of run stalls for Woodcraft Folk in the past, what sort of other activities have people um, used or ideas that you have that you think might work well? Feel free to yeah shout out or um, the chat. Yeah, when I've done outreach events in local parks, um, parachute games work really well if you get enough kids. Mm -hmm. what, what, any particular and parachute because, games or just generally having the parachute out as a bright, colourful object? I think just having it there. And if it's a nice day and you've got a bunch of kids, they tend to suggest games as well because they do them at school. Mm hmm. Because I know we do things like um, fruit salad, quite a lot of the groups, but the kids really like, like the sharks and lifeguards game where they have to pull mm -hmm. each other under. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you can get enough kids around a parachute to get it going, it then is very visible to in kind of encouraging others to come over and participate as well, isn't it? Mm. And it looks really good in photos as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cool. Are there any other activities that people have um, done before? Uh, Abigail has just added in the chat um, that uh, previous event she's run a uh, a mud kitchen um, as a way to engage children um, while you talk to the parents. Which sounds like yeah, a lot of a lot of fun um, when you can be outdoors, uh, kind of making a mess, um, and I guess yeah, quite. You, you've got the tools to to make that kitchen work, but actually the resource mainly is uh, mud and fairly uh, easy to hand. Excellent. And Emily's just added uh, playing uh, nature bingo um, to get children to kind of explore the area and catching um, the eye of other families as they look for leaves, trees and seeds and encourage other families to get involved um, that way. Yeah, I think that's a really, a really good one of kind of getting people to explore uh, a space again, if you're at an outdoor um, community event um, of kind of, yeah, maybe even like expanding the Woodcroft Rake influence beyond the space that you've got for a stand by taking that activity kind of across the site as well. And then, so I'm just going to move on uh, to talk about some top tips. So these were kind of when I want to summarise kind of three things, I think, um, to take away from thinking about running a community event is firstly, to make sure that you've got something um, that to take away to uh, make sure that they remember um, Woodcraft folk. Um, so something that we've uh, used at a lot of events are stickers in particular as uh, a kind of in return for um, participation in the activity or just kind of attending the stall. Um, lots of children like to kind of collect different stickers. Um, there are some in the folk supply. Um, you can buy sheets of um, the Woodcraft folk symbol um, as stickers from folk supply, or you can uh, make your own on a, a simple kind of like label template and kind of off the shelf uh, print, home printer labels. Um, and then thinking about um, if you're at an event where people may have travelled some way, um, having um, information to hand that also directs them to the, the national website um, where they might be able to find days and times for other groups that might actually be closer to where they live um, because they might not be uh, immediately local to the group you're from and none of us has an encyclopedic knowledge of 
all the groups in the country and times and days they meet. So being able to have that, that centralised resource um, to hand uh, and the website address, which is woodcraft.org.uk forward slash where, um, which isn't quite written in the, um, the slide, but it's fairly easy to um, remember um, as a, a place to direct people to so they can always find the group that is uh, the nearest and the most convenient for them. And then I think my final top tip is always uh, choose an activity um, that helps to give people a sense of what Woodcraft Folk is about. It's not just a, a way to entice people over to um, the stall to talk to you. It's a way to also, part of the conversation is that activity um, that they're taking part in, whether that's um, explaining something around our um, use of cooperation, about peace, about the environment, about um, learning about the world and uh, international um, friendship. It can help to give people a better understanding of Woodcroft Folk through the activity they're doing, as well as that chance to have uh, spoken conversations and give them written information um, about the organisation as well. So now I just want to open the floor um, after my kind of brief run through of an uh, introduction to community events to having a, a bit of a discussion. If was there, have you got any burning questions um, or particular topics that you'd like to hear about other people's um, experiences of? Um, again, feel free to in the chat and I can uh, read it out to share it with everyone um, or feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and ask it. I, I don't have a question, mm -hmm. but just on the topic of the Woodcraft Folk stickers. Yeah. We've found that they're really useful if you have to keep a record of how many children have actually attended the event you're doing. Okay, if you start yeah. with a full sheet. And then you can count how many stickers you've handed out during the day. And if children don't want a sticker, like you just stick it on the back of the sheet so that you still know how many children have visited you. Cool. That's a really good top tip. Yeah. Yeah. Where, you, where you're perhaps doing um, outreach uh, linked to a funded project. You've got some kind of sponsorship from anywhere that, that wants to know how many people you're engaging with. That's a really great way of yeah, keeping track. <laughs> Do people have uh, plans for any um, com events coming up that you're attending? Have you got any ideas about what you're going to be doing at those? Um, on the 24th of November, I'm doing an event at our local co-op store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the Fox group have had one of the co-op community grants and... On the 24th of November, it's payout celebration day. So all the groups who've been funded through the co-op can go into their local store and sort of set up a little stall and meet people and tell them about what we've been spending our grant money on. And I think it's a good chance for us to just get out there a bit and tell people about Woodcraft Folk as well. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of saying a little bit saying thank you back to those co-op members who where the funding's. Um, come from but you're also kind of yeah being able to talk to everyday shoppers who are passing through on that day mm. I think quite a lot of different uh, co-op um, particularly the food stores do do those kind of um, community days I know some of our groups um, our group in St Neots went to their local um, one and from that started the conversation with the co-op store um, as well as being able to kind of promote themselves to the, the Saturday shoppers on the day they were there, they then spoke to staff from the store by being there about kind of possible funding, kind of the opposite way around to, to your, your example. Um, 
it can be yeah really good for building that relationship with your local co-op who might be a funder but also can really help with that um, promoting your group Well, if you have any questions that you don't want to say online or if you're watching this back at a, a later date, um, my email address is on the slide. So feel free um, to get in touch if suddenly uh, a question comes to mind or anything um, that you'd like an answer to. Feel free to yeah, drop me an email and I will do my best um, to get you an answer that way. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, for our brief webinar about um, community events. Um, and we have lots more uh, coming up in the series. Our next one um, takes place a week on Thursday, um, so the 8th of November. And that one will be exploring volunteer induction and support. So once you've uh, been really successful in promoting your group, you've got lots of new volunteers who are interested, how can we best and support them to get to know the organisation and stay involved and develop in volunteer roles. So I look forward to seeing some of you again for that webinar. Um, otherwise, please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, Pippa. Thanks. <laughs>